Yo, what is up guys? I'm just in here. This looks like nothing, but I promise you, it's the opening scenes of our Sri Lanka film. Me and Mike, Mike say hi. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Me and Mike uh, are in here working on the documentary. Uh, we've been only working on it in a couple days now, yeah. but we're, uh, we're excited to be releasing that. We don't know when, it'll probably be sometime this fall, but wanted to do part two of the Sri Lanka vlog. This video is gonna be a bit more of kind of tutorial-ish. I'll be jumping back and forth between Sri Lanka and the edit suite here. But uh, without further ado, let's get to the video. So it's early morning here and my lens, it's been in the air conditioning all night so it's probably really hazy. That's a little tip when you're filming in warm countries. Just get your lenses acclimatized before you go out and film. But I think we're what, day, are we day four? We're day four? Day five. I think it's day five. I think it's day five. It's using my t-shirt here. We gotta get going. We're shooting uh, the victims from the Easter bombings here in Sri Lanka. Uh, we've been meeting with our characters in our film so far, been building a relationship with them so they're more comfortable on camera with us. And today, we're going across the city. Man! Anyways, we're going across the city. And we're gonna be talking to all the victims from the Easter bombings uh, and hopefully getting some good scenes for the film today. So, gonna go pack up, gonna get down there. Me and Mike are gonna shoot with two FS7s, cross shoot. Mike's gonna be on a wide, I'll be on a tight. And we're gonna crush it. survivors from the terrorist attacks that happened in April. There was over 300 people killed and over 500 people injured in these attacks. And the people you're seeing on camera are some of the survivors. You can see they have burns on their face. Some of them have been blinded. Their stories are incredible and they're really quite tragic because so many of them not only have been injured but have lost many, many of their family members. And what's incredible though in this situation is this young group of Sri Lankans who banded together to create an organization called Heal Lanka. And they've worked together in order to provide medical attention and care for the hundreds of survivors from these attacks. Especially the younger people who often had both of their parents killed and now are orphans. They're helping them get through school, get the proper medical attention. It's amazing work that they're doing. And I feel very lucky to have gotten to capture it. And we really want to incorporate it into the film that we're making. So, just drove across the country. A a like, actually drove across from one side to the other. Which is always a bit of a novelty for me as a Canadian because that takes like 10 months to drive across Canada. But, we are on the west side, now we're on the east side of Sri Lanka in a place called Batakaloa. About to go do a bit of filming, get a last shot, saw something on the way in that looks pretty cool. But the shoot's been going well so far. It's been checking off all those scenes that we've been shooting. My room is so hot. But besides that, it's going well. Got Mike on the other side of the country. He's filming some stuff. I'm filming here, we split it up. Oh yeah, the coolest thing happened. Flying the drone because it was sunset. Well, it turned out to be a pretty bad sunset, but I wanted to shoot some mountains. And I'm flying it across and I see these little specks down by this lake. So I fly the drone down there wondering what it was. Maybe it was some cows or something. I don't know, I just wanted to shoot something. Turns out it was elephants, wild elephants. So I got this amazing shot, spun around the beautiful lake, mountains in the background. Turned out to be the best luck ever. Just threw my drone in the air and happened to be around wild elephants. So that was super cool. But I'm gonna go get myself some roti and call it a night. See you guys soon. gonna take a brief interruption from the beautiful elephants to show you this lovely sunset at my house because it's like halfway through summer and the sun is gonna start going back the other way and it's gonna be winter here in a matter of moments in Canada. 
gorgeous sunset. But now that I got you out here, uh, a quick tip on documentary filmmaking. You know, watching that footage of the elephants made me think about how sometimes you need to just take control of a documentary. There's this idea with documentaries that you're just supposed to let everything happen in front of you. And you can certainly approach it that way. It's more of a verite style film. But for the most part, you need to be a bit more active as a filmmaker, as a storyteller and creator when you're shooting a documentary. You just can't wait for everything to come to you. So for example, with that shot of the elephants, although that footage may not make it into my film, it doesn't really have anything to do with my plot, although it does show the beauty and the splendor of Sri Lanka. I just had to get a shot that day. We'd been driving across the entire country and I had no footage and I hate not having anything after an entire day of driving. So I just told everyone, you know, sun was setting. I was like, just pull over, let's try and get something. And you know, the film gods, they reward you on your effort. Don't let the world pass you by when you're making your documentary. Or you might get back to the edit suite and realize you don't have enough quality footage. Now let's get back to the blog. So, it's uh, like 5.30 a.m. I think. Kinda sleepy, but I'm trying to get a sunrise, but doesn't look like I'm gonna get one. I'm gonna do a bit of droning. Um, there's a lot of fishermen out though, which might be cool. So, let's give her a whirl. If you don't have ND filters for your drone, then you shouldn't own a drone, because you'd need these so you can achieve 1 50th shutter at all times, but Right now I don't really need it, so I'm gonna take off my ND filter. So my drone's not happy about where we are. Too much magnetic interference since I think I'm filming beside a generator, so. I'm gonna walk down the road and see what we can get. We got a happy drone now. Let's fly. starting to really rain here and if you know me I've flown my drone in the rain but I don't want to take the risk when it's over the ocean also I got a low battery so overall pretty disappointing droning I feel like every time I fly the drone on this trip it's just clouds but that's what happens when you're in monsoon season I'm gonna get this little guy out of the rain so he can take a rest and so can I like grab another wink before a wink, I sound like a dad. So I'm gonna get a little more sleep before we have to go do our next shoot. See you soon. Another tip for when you're shooting documentaries overseas is review your footage every night. Just take five minutes at the least just to go through the footage you just shot. Put it in your editing software. I like to put some music underneath it. I like to see what I'm actually shooting because so often you're in a new country or you're trying to think about a new story and your mind is racing during the day and you're shooting all this footage and it can feel like you're actually leading somewhere and you're getting good stuff. But sometimes when you sit down at your edit suite, it's quiet and you review the footage, you realize, go out. You realize maybe I'm not you, re you realize you might not be getting the best footage that you could be. Maybe it's that you're rushing your shots or maybe that you're not getting the shots you thought you were. It's just really important to sit down, review the footage. And when you review your footage, you begin to get new ideas and new insights on how to tell your story. It's just, it's so important. I know you come home, you're tired, you want to go to bed or maybe you want to go out and meet some people but just taking that 10 to 15 minutes to scrub through the footage you shot that day is so helpful to know if you're on the right path in your film. Another tip, and I need to do this one myself, is be patient with your shots. I'm learning more and more these days that if I leave a shot, not just for 10 seconds, I'm learning more and more these days that when, I'm, come on, really, honestly guys, what, what is the deal? We can drive around each other. 
I'm learning more and more these days that where when I used to just count to 10 seconds and then I would click cut, I'm actually starting to count to 30, 40, sometimes leaving a shot for two minutes if I find an interesting frame. Sometimes just letting a shot breathe allows the editor to choose the best place because there's things that are gonna unfold in front of your camera that you could never expect. I think we get somewhere and we want to just shoot like a hundred good shots in a day, but I think we should just focus on getting maybe just 10 good shots and really getting good shots and letting those shots breathe. I think we just come in and we rush, we think we're getting good footage, but when you sit down at the edit suite, you realize that everything is being rushed, that you're missing the really important moment. Let your shots breathe, be patient, and let the moment unfold. You don't have to force it. By the way, if you're enjoying the music, maybe you're not enjoying it, maybe you've noticed it, maybe you haven't even thought anything about it, but the music in this vlog specifically all comes from Epidemic Sound. I really love them. They have a huge library and the music is legit good. Often I find with stock music, it is terrible, but Epidemic Sound has an incredible library. They even give you the stems, which means you can pull out just like certain instruments from the music. I love it. I have a code down there. It's a free trial code. Make sure to use it. Also too, if you need sound effects for your work, I have partnered up with Film Crux and their Singularity film package, which has cinematic sounds. It's awesome. Gives you transition sounds, gives you some atmospheres. I have a code down below as well for that. That'll get you uh, I think like 25% off. It's awesome library. I've been using some of those sound effects in this video as well. Sound is super important. Music is super important. So make sure to check those links out below, but let's get back to it. Actually, there's nothing to get back to. I just got to end this vlog now. So I actually have to run over to the Apple store and get my laptop fixed. I don't know how many things have broken on my laptop since I bought it, like three months ago. It's like the fifth repair. I love your products, Apple. Well, actually, I don't even know I love your products anymore. They've been struggling. But anyways, if you're in Toronto on the 22nd, me and Mati Hapoya, a good friend of mine, are gonna be doing a meet and greet at the Creator Class, so make sure to check that out. Probably gonna be posted online as well. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Talk soon.